Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Christmas Day, December 25th at 8.06 p.m. Mountain Time, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update, and you're looking at the Grand Solar Minimum Sun. Dropping down, down, down over the last six hours, well down into A range with zero activity, even though there's a sunspot pointing right at us. Pretty typical of the solar minimum sun. So is extreme cold warnings issued over most of Saskatchewan. Hope you guys are bundled up. Currently minus eight. Environment Canada's issued extreme cold warnings after frigid Arctic air mass was swept into Saskatchewan. Temperatures are expected to drop to minus 30 Sunday night, combined with northwest winds with wind chills of negative 40 to negative 45 C overnight in the morning. Heads up. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, via rail train mechanisms failure strands 98 passengers in Spy Hill. That's not good when it's minus 28 C. A Toronto bound via rail train experienced a mechanical failure in eastern Saskatchewan today, delay delaying the holiday travels of 98 passengers who spent most of Christmas Day in the tiny community hill of Spy Hill. Way better than freezing your ass off in the <laughs> outside. I assure you. Winnipeg sun, extreme cold weather wallops in Manitoba. Nice hat. A woman walks along Main Street near Jarvis Avenue in Winnipeg. Extreme cold weather warnings issued Sunday for much of Manitoba, including the city of Winnipeg. Multi-day episode of very cold wind chills. Arctic air, we're talking minus 40 to 45 this is coming out of Environment Canada. This is the cold weather advisory. Here are all the areas with extreme wind chills. That's a heads up. I'll leave you links to this map if you're up in Canada so you can peruse it yourself. Christmas in Minnesota is sent to be the coldest in 20 years. Here we are, 4 degrees. Here we are, 1996. Hmm. What happened in 1996? Oh, solar minimum between cycle 21 and 23. Very similar to the solar minimum we're experiencing now. I wonder if there's a connection between uh, the sun and climate. Nah, it's just CO2. Let's go over to Kansas City. I know some of you subscribers are from there. Christmas cold snap, Kansas City heading for near record lows. It's true. They're dropping down to levels unseen uh, since 1902 and 1925. Mm, 1902, down here in this solar minimum between 13 and 14. And 25, down here during the centennial minimum. Heads up. I wonder if the sun controls weather. Someone once told me that. Snowfall at Erie International Airport in Pennsylvania between midnight 7 p.m. measured 21 inches. That's a record, and that's a boom. Erie smashes the Christmas Day snowfall record, and that's an Erie city over there in Erie. We come down beneath the Vivica now. We've pulled our budges in. What is going on? <laughs> okay, we're back. The snowbound intersection of West 12th and Sassafras Streets, 21 inches. Thompson said 5 p.m. preliminary reports of 13.6 was off because of high winds. For the season, snowfall is double the norm for the area. 60.5 inches total compared to the average of 28. And that's a boom. Breaking the holiday record set in 2002 when 8 inches of snow fell. This is 21, almost tripling it. Heads up, Erie. That's a lot of shoveling. Pocono record. This is the Pocono record. So apparently a lot happened up here in the Northeast. Christmas brings Northeast blizzard bitter cold to the Midwest. Are they vacuuming the field? What in God's name are they doing? Forecasters warn that snow of 10 inches and wind gusts of 50 could make travel dangerous. Chicago, good news in the Northeast and Midwest. That's a white Christmas. Bad news is a blizzard swept through parts of New England and bitter cold enveloped much of the Midwest. This brought uh, 
glorious white Christmas to most people in the area, which is nice. Operations restored at Logan Airport after weather delays. That's you, Jimmy. The dunk. A runway at Logan Airport photographed today. Operations were returned to normal just after 11.30 a.m. Just before 10.30 a.m. on Christmas Day, Logan Airport reported that due to a quick change in temperature, crews had been able to keep up with the snow as a precaution we're not departing any landing aircraft so heavy snow they couldn't keep up with it reopen that caused some delays over there in uh, boston white christmas for you guys it's official in scotland boom areas in cumbria in the south of scotland recording light snowfall the met office confirmed the snowfall in spadendam cumbria at 2200 gmt in a tweet the forecasters added that parts of the south of scotland are also seeing rain turn to snow ho 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 more wintry showers are expected with a chance of 10 centimeters of snow of the highest ground of scotland More than 1 million evacuated from southern Vietnam as Typhoon Temblin has strengthened and is expected to make landfall. This is going to be deadly. Typhoon Temblin has strengthened and is expected to make landfall today along the coast of southern Vietnam after killing 200 people with as many missing and leaving 70,000 homeless, primarily in the Philippines. The storm, which is now packing gusts of 115 kilometers per hour, is traveling west at 22 kilometers per hour, according to Vietnam News. A total of more than 1.1 million people in 15 provinces and cities in the south have been evacuated. Boom! And that is a grand solar minimum cosmic ray fluxed. Uh, we've got a, an earthquake just popping off moments ago here in the Aleutians. Probably associated with uh, the volca uh, erupting volcanoes on that chain currently. Moderate seismic uptick worldwide uh, which is relaxing the lithosphere in non-violent ways which is good it's a little christmas joy there ice free arctic doubt it scientists warns of rising oceans foul weather from polar melt 20 years the sea level is going to be up 20 feet according to these idiots and we're all going to drown and there's going to be no more ice in the arctic and climate change is even forcing Santa to move to the South Pole, the Canadian government says. This is absolutely atrocious and disgusting. This is brainwashing and indoctrination of our children at the highest level. You should be outraged at this nonsense. The Canadian government website claims that global warming is forcing Santa Claus to relocate his toy-making village to the South Pole. If you come over to the Technical Institute of Leningrad and you look at the North Pole, you can see that there is multi-year ice forming from continent to continent in the polar region now. NASA will never show you the truth about the poles. The entire Arctic is covered in ice. And it is now currently connected with multi-year ice from both sides of the pole. Here's North America up here to the north that's gone off the map because they don't want to show it because they're embarrassed. They leave these lies to NASA and NOAA. But in Russia, they have the truth, and it's showing that the Arctic is now multi-year ice and is building, just as we are predicting and just as the sun is telling us. Same thing the albedo is showing us, Hudson Bay completely frozen. Over half of North America is covered in snow currently. Look at the albedo effect here, folks. No one is going to be telling you about this. Everything north of 45, except some of Europe, completely covered in snow currently. And we're going to be using the Leningrad data moving forward. This is the analysis from December 19th, 2017. And it's showing epic ice up in the Arctic. Now, a lot of you have been asking about what's happening with the primer fields in the sun and what is to be expected. If you don't know about the Ulysses spacecraft, this is sent up and did orbits from 1992 to 1998, and the third orbit went from 2004 to 2008, and then the mission ended. What you're looking at is the Ulysses data set, where the older orbit in green is measuring the solar wind dynamic pressure. 
And then six years later, came back by here and it noticed a 20% decrease in the solar wind pressure. With high energy electrons in the giga electric volt range, galactic cosmic rays increasing 20% at the same time. Now, if you take this linear progression of the dy dynamic solar wind pressure and you plot it on a graph, it will eventually hit zero and then go negative. With solar winds diminishing at such a fast rate, you can see what's going to happen quickly. So we're going to have a solar minimum for the next three years, 2018, 19, 20, and then another one in a decade. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And one of these minimums, either a massive EMP will come out of the sun as predicted, or the primer fields will collapse, also a prediction. In which case, the solar temperatures will be extremely diminished immediately, as if the sun powers down 30%. No one really knows when it will happen, but with this linear progression, it's going to be quickly happening during your lifetime. So the next decade or so is going to be an amazing time to be alive on the planet, to watch the geologic forces of nature take hold. And that's why NASA is going back up to the sun because the Ulysses spacecraft is done and they need to monitor if this is still diminishing at this rate or accelerating. Whew. Times are changing. Guys, this is a Christmas present to you. I got access from the Journal of Atmospheric and Solar Terrestrial Physics, the correlation between solar activity and local temperature of the Antarctic during the past 11,000 years. And this is crucial to our... Uh, study here on the channel and this is crucial to the study of solar cycles and its effect on the weather globally because most of the information is from North America and it's nice to have information from both poles so I'm gonna leave you links to this you can peruse the data it's amazing and what it shows is uh, a very high correlation between uh, solar dynamics and temperature and climate the Sun controls the climate on earth and extra cosmic galactic radiation uh, backs it up. And here are the 9,400 years of cosmic radiation and solar activity from ice cores and tree rings uh, kind of sorts all that out. The overlaying cosmogenic forcing of our climate um, is told. It's laid out in a booklet in tree rings where we can see the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillations affecting climate overlapping with the Pacific oscillations, the solar cycles, the 206-year um, grand minimum cycle on the 1,000-year Donskard Ushgig cycle, etc., etc. And that and, and that is laid out in the tree rings and the ice cores very clearly. And the data is very clear in this paper, which I'm leaving you as a Christmas gift, where you can come and see the cosmic ray intensity, how it relates to solar cycles, and how it relates to temperature, and how it controls the climate. And with all that being said, we are at the bottom of solar cycle 24, and for the next three years, we're going to be descending to a total solar irradiance of which modern humans have never experienced, which means that galactic cosmic rays are going to be increasing at the same rate as the sun is decreasing. Solar output decreases, cosmic rays increase. Now you couple that with the diminishing solar wind from the Ulysses spacecraft, the waning magnetic field of our Earth, and that's a boom. We are in for some amazing times, and it's 2018. Happy New Year. We'll be covering it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people, and let's start preparing for the future. Be safe, and Merry Christmas.